Annyeong SAO! Welcome to Afternoon of Delight, where Leah, Megan, and Amy, romance novelists and your K romance guides. So grab some deck bokey and listen to your new favorite unnees. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hi. All right. So we have our favorite. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying hour like the royal hour. <laughs> I have my favorite BL buddies today. Allison from Afternoon of Army and Megan from Afternoon of Delight. And you know me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we we have two dramas to talk about today. And I think that I just we were gonna talk about the eighth sense, and then I I just got Jack of Frost done and was like, I need to talk about it too. So good. Yeah. So there's it's not that this is like a thematically linked thing, it was just mostly yeah. I have watched both in the last seven days and I need to discuss. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I'm mean, excited to discuss both of them. No, they're not like, some... well, I don't know. They kind of both have those like that, like slow, like angst and like some sexual tension in both of them. So I don't know. We could maybe make a, a thin thread of connection. Yeah, we, can, we can thread the needle a little bit. Let's just start. <laughs> by, let's just talk about the it sense. Then we'll pivot and talk about uh, Jack of Frost. And how do you want to, I mean, Let's just decide now. I feel like, do we want to make it really non-spoilery or how do you, uh, how do you I think we got to kind of talk. We can have what we highlight when we get to some spoilers. I, okay. I think we need to talk with some spoilers, especially when yeah. it comes to like Eighth Sense, just because I think that there's, you know, some plot points that we should discuss that are obviously spoilers. Okay. Yeah. So we will highlight when we get to the spoiler sections, just mm -hmm. so that you know to fast forward. But and honestly, both of these dramas are not that long. Go watch them because they're amazing. I mean, you can watch both in a night, like Probably. separate nights, unless you really want to rock it. But I would take two <laughs> nights. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely watch Jack o Frost. I think in one sitting. I could be oh, wrong, yeah. but I'm almost I positive. Too. I did. Yeah. Just Eighth Sense, I had to stretch over two days. Yeah, I did two days too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get into what kind of like the overarching, like, you know, uh, blurb is for the Eighth Sense for those mm -hmm. of you who don't know or just need to reorient yourself. So we have Ji Hyun, who is a new college student from the Podunks, <laughs> and he is struggling to adjust to the busy, busy city life of Seoul. And at university, he meets Jae Won, who has just completed military serv service. And they both um, are in a school surfing club. And they both begin to develop some feels for each other. And during one surfing trip, they have some intimacy. But after a triggering incident, Jae Won acts as if nothing happened, which leaves Ji Hyun confused about their connection. So... This drama was released this year, 2023. It's running time. <laughs> it's funny now that I'm like, oh, I just blast it out one night because it's running time is about six hours. <laughs> so, but it's easily two days. Easy. It's easy two days. Easy. <laughs> um, it is 10 episodes with about 30 to 40 minutes an episode. And I would say the genre is like a new adult, like classic new adult romance. These are students who are not, you know, school age. They are not full-fledged adults living out in the world. They're kind of in that like college age period that we would classify in book publishing as new adult and kind of all the angsty goodness that comes within that we can kind of expect from new adults. And I just want to mention real quick, it's on Viki. Yes, it's on Viki. Sorry. I just always like to mention, especially with BLs, because they can be all different apps. It is on Viki. Yeah. And so I think it's pretty accessible to most folks who are, you know, excited to watch uh, Asian entertainment in general. So to the two of you, this drama has gotten a lot of hype. What drew you to the drama? Like, were you ahead of the curve or were you brought in by the hype? And what do you think makes it special? If you think it's special, you may be like, I hate it. <laughs> I'll go. Um, so I just only watch BL pretty much at this point. And it, I follow a lot of BL accounts on Instagram, which is my only social media source of information. Um, and it like I just saw it coming like trailers and I was like, oh, putting that on my list. So it was on my to watch list. I watched it from the beginning. Um, and 
the hype built around it, which was really interesting just to see then like how much of my Instagram feed was taken over by it as the weeks progressed. Um, what makes it special for me is the cinematography, which is at some point sort of like um, shit showish, where I'm like, can we just like maybe brighten it up a little bit so I can actually see them a little bit better? <laughs> um, there's some weird things that happen like with the the cinematography but overall it's very unique and beautiful and not really a style that i've seen in kbl or thai bl um before and that was really neat for me the other piece that makes it really special is the music like the soundtrack is really incredible i think i've got all the songs on my like playlist now um and I think it's gotten hype for those reasons and because of the chemistry of the leads. And the actor who plays um, Ji Hoon is, he was picked up off the street and was like, hey, do you want to be in this role? Like, he wasn't an actor. This is his first. They just found him. Which is staggering because I was looking up to see what else he'd been in and it was like nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did they not. That's brand new information for me. I did not know that. Yeah. So. And it's there's a clip of them doing a press conference and he's like making finger hearts and hand, you know, all this stuff. And the actor who plays J1 just like puts his hand down and is like, come on, buddy, like you can do this. It's adorable. So super cute. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you and I, obviously, we DM on Instagram about mm-hmm. BLs, uh, me, Megan and Allison. And you were like, are you going to start it? And I'm like, no, I'm not because it's giving me not happily ever after vibes from the trailer to everything. I was like, I'm getting, (laughs) I'm getting tragic vibes and I am not going to get invested in these guys and then have one of them die. Like I just, I'm not, I'm sorry. I don't want to do it. So I was like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And you, I remember, Allison, you're like, I might try to hold off. And then, like, the day, the next day, you're like, I caved. I'm watching it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you kind of kept messaging. You're like, it is really good. It is really good. And I'm like, okay, Allison, I know. But I'm going to wait. And then and I knew when it was airing. And so the, the day after the last episode, I wrote you and I said, is it safe to watch? And you wrote yes with a smiley face. And I was like, okay. Okay, I'm good to go. <laughs> Yeah. I'm good to go. But it was the same. Um, I got, I saw like a lot of hype. I saw clips and I was like, really, I was as much as it was kind of giving me tragic ending vibes. I did like the atmosphere of how it looked like it was shot. The two leads are both very unique looking to me. Like I love the, ca- I love the cast. Um, and I was just extremely interested in in it from the beginning. Like, I think one of the first clips I saw was kind of like the infamous wetsuit scene. And I was like, Oh my God, like that. Whew. So, um, yeah, that's basically, I, I same, I like got swept up in the hype, but I held strong. I held strong. My problem is like literally a hundred percent of my Instagram feed is BL. And so if I don't watch it as it comes out, then it's going to get spoiled for me. I was just going to say that I was like, you probably, and I, I had to resist because sometimes I would sign on a Twitter and it was less just like comment after comment about the eighth sense. Like for a while there, I didn't go on Twitter because it was full of spoilers. Yeah. How about you, Leah? What drew you to it? So what drew me to it was surfing, honestly. And so we can get into the surfing a little bit later or, you know, we can, you know, we can bring it up right now. I think um, you don't see a lot of surfing in (laughs) K-drama. And so, you know, there is hometown cha-cha-cha and there was some surfing in airs. But, you know, I live in a surf town. I am not myself a surfer, although, you know, there are family members in my immediate family who do surf a bit. And, And so, yeah, I mean, it just caught my attention for that. And then there was just kind of like an aesthetic to how it visually looks that just felt a little bit more indie and that got me excited. And so Megan, I know that we first met, I think on Twitter when you were like, I want a new adult book. That's like garden state. And I was Mm. like, me too. Mm -hmm. And so not to say this has like the vibe of garden state, but just like, 
it felt a little bit more offbeat than some other things that get packaged a little bit more mainstream, I guess. Yeah. So actually, I, I want to say that I have watched a lot of college-ish K-dramas. And again, I, I obviously went to college in the United States. So it is it is going to be a different experience than than college in another country. I acknowledge that. But I would say that this K-drama is the first K-drama to me that felt like a college experience. It felt the most real to me than literally any K-drama I've seen that was had a college setting. Um, I don't know if it was like the friendship camaraderie, um, the like making friends like awkwardly and like sitting at, at lunch. Um, there's like a big party scene at the end that I don't know. There, I almost can't explain it. There was just some sort of like authenticity to the way this was written that to me felt like a genuine like university type experience that I haven't gotten in in any other K drama. And I think what was also nice was that the character of Ji Hyun, who's like our protagonist, I guess, who's, you know, from the country and coming, he's introverted and he has some social anxieties. And so I felt like that resonated a lot too, because he is just kind of awkward and nervous. He's working to hold down a job. And then, you know, but he is like sweet and adorable. So he kind of does get like adopted a little bit like a cute puppy by like two of the soul girls that are like more sophisticated. But that felt genuine to me too, because sometimes that does happen. Like you get the guy that's like, you're like kind of like your friend zone buddy that like you're just going to be with. Like you're not looking to like get with them. Like you're just like, this is like kind of like our little like charity case that we've adopted. And I felt like that was kind of his role until he kind of got like, you know, noticed by the, the surf. Happy. Yeah. And that scene with Jay Wan and his female friend, who's like the president of the surf club, where they like go to the bar in the middle of the day and they're just like having existential crises about their future and just like yeah. getting drunk on beer and soju. I was like, I've been there. I've done that in college where you're just like, man, the future is scary. Let's just go to the bar after class. Like, I don't know, just mm -hmm. uh, there was something about it that felt so authentic to me. And maybe that's another reason I related. Like, I think it's the only college K-drama too, where I was like, I sort of wish I was there. I sort of wish I was on that campus. And I've never felt that way about other K-drama campuses. I'm like, that sounds terrible. <laughs> but I mean, like, we do have some of the cliche that's like, not, and I'm not saying this in a bad way, but you know, we have you know, the one main character whose parents own a business and like the idea is he's going to like eventually inherit the business. And that's a pretty convention. Like that's not like breaking a lot of new ground. It worked fine for the drama. But yeah, like we see other students who are like really looking and trying and applying for jobs and on that grind and being like, I've got loans, like I've got like financial obligations <laughs> that are going to be coming due and I need to like get a job and I am not getting a job and just kind of like showing again, some of that like hustle and some of the grind and then like the joy of what happens when like, you're like, Oh my God, I'm not going to be living in a van by the river. Like I got a job. <laughs> right. Like when I was in college, that was, we probably talked about that more than we talked about boys. We were like, Oh my God, what are we going to do? Where are we going to get a job? Like there was just so many conversations in this drama that felt real to me for what I would consider like a new adult experience. Thinking back on it and sort of reflecting on what, just what you guys have said is that's another piece of why I think this drama sort of stands out is just the, the realistic um and like you said like you can imagine yourself sitting down and having those conversations and wanting to be a part of that life so. yeah i guess this definitely didn't feel like like a fantasy drama and by yeah. fantasy i don't mean like magic i mean like the fantasy of romance which we often get in k-dramas which i also love mm -hmm. like i love that too um and i I think that's one thing I like about the amount of like BLs that are coming out from Korea and like Thailand, because we're getting such like a, a big swath of representation. So we're like getting the super romantic, like fan fantastical romances, like, like maybe like our dating sim, which is kind of like sweet. But then we're also getting these like realistic new adult romances, like the eighth sense 
and I I love that we're getting like the diversity of representation. Mm-hmm. So what would you say some tropes like if if folks are listening to this and they haven't watched it, what are some of the tropes that you think viewers can um, can expect in watching this? Can we call it faded mates? Like it feels very faded mates to me. I don't know if I would say that, but I would like to hear your thoughts on it. I mean, there's no, I'm not going to like debate you. I just want to like hear it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I want to hear it. Cause I mean, no spoiler. I think they meet in the first episode, but they meet and then their eyes lock and then they just know, like there's just instant chemistry. And then just like, they keep circling so around like each other. Like yeah. And then, you know, with like, following him and figuring out he's in the surfing club and then being like, okay, this is like, now I'm going to do this and pursue this because one, it's challenging for me, pushes me outside of my bubble and two, he's involved. So I want to be a part of that. And there's, I don't think this is a spoiler, but there's a lot of, for um, J1, there's a lot of, having to go against what is expected of him in order to be with Ji-hoon. So. Mm-hmm. Megan, how about you? What tropes? Um, I would say opposites attract. Because I think they're very opposites. Um, I thought when we first got like J-1 that he was going to be this like brooding closed off guy. But I actually loved that he was like, like I loved his whole storyline, how he was actually very charming like people liked him he was popular but it was like a lot of times just a mask yeah he was broody on the inside (laughs) yeah he was like broody on the inside and i love that he could then like i think he was still like a charming person but you could kind of see that he sort of like overall dropped that mask when he was around ji hyun and i really like that um so yeah i would say opposites attract yeah i was gonna go with city mouse and country mouse too Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, I think that, like, you're going to get a lot of that. Like, it's definitely not like an enemies to lovers vibe at all. So this is like off script. But just a question is, I like how we have, like, Jihyun. It felt very real to me to be like, okay, this guy who's, like, so dreamy (laughs) is in the surf club. So, like, I'm going to go in the stretch zone first for myself. But also because, like, I got hard eyes for this dude. In college, did you ever do anything that brought you out of your comfort zone because Mm. of a love interest? Hmm. I can go first because I did. Yes. Yeah, I want to hear. Ridiculous story. (laughs) (laughs) Of course not. No, go ahead. So I had hard eyes for a guy who was an environmental activist lusty heart eyes that I loved him so much. And my MO in college was if I liked someone, I just didn't talk to them or make eye contact. That was like how I showed my like deep love. And so (laughs) I really liked this guy. So I joined the like environmental activism group that he was in. (laughs) I mean, I cared about the earth as well, but you know, I was horny and, (laughs) um, they were organizing a direct action in the wilderness of Idaho. And I was like, I don't even care. I don't even care what it is. Just like that dude's going, I'm in. Like, where do I need to sign up? Like, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what's happening. I'm in all the way. So I end up in like some rickety VW van driving out into like the Idaho mountains and like the dudes in the car. And I'm like, kind of car sick and I'm like I don't really honestly know what I'm doing but like (laughs) he's hot and he's here and I'm stoked and not talking to him unfortunately for me we got dropped off on some like I don't even know I mean we were in the middle of nowhere and I mean literally like nowhere Idaho and the dudes there was like a bunch of there were like five girls and then a bunch of dudes and they were like, okay, ladies, out. Like, you get out here. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and they were like, we're going to go drive around to the other side to do, like, some whatever, whatever. You're going to hike in here and, like, support, like, whatever the anti-logging thing is. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> like, uh-oh. Like, I've got my little backpack. 
So not only was I not going to spend a romantic weekend saving the earth with like Mr. Bay, I was dropped off on a logging road in the middle of nowhere with four other girls I didn't know. And a dude comes out of the forest and is like, follow me. Like we're going to like wherever. And it's like 12 miles away. It's like nine o'clock at night. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh. And then he's like, and I can't tell you my real name for legal reasons. You can call me Cobweb. (laughs) So I had to follow Cobweb up into the mountains like for 12 miles. What the hell? Fuck at night when I got dropped off. We hiked through the fucking night. (laughs) <laughs> and ended up in like a camp full of camo with like people ready to like go to prison and i was like rah, rah, like i was here for the boy and i don't even know where he is anymore oh, and that was no. my hot it didn't work out <laughs> that is amazing you flew too close to the sun for that I one you too close <laughs> to the sun and then i remember they like went and they were like okay we're gonna like go do whatever like the action was like people were gonna like basically get arrested by like you know chaining themselves to stuff and i was like i'm gonna volunteer to keep the camp clean because i'm not getting arrested for this today <laughs> and then like they were like the girls i was with they were like we're all gonna volunteer to keep the camp clean and we were all like holy shit so yeah we stayed back and kept the camp clean and didn't go to jail and then uh I don't remember. I think we like hiked down like another road and they like picked us up and I don't even know what the fuck they did. But that's what I did. I, I mean, I, I <laughs> how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to follow that? And I can't even think, I guarantee I did something. Maybe I just have like a bad memory or, I, and I also feel like some of the stuff I did is not pot appropriate. So I probably just. <laughs> Oh my gosh, like more appropriate than going to jail for environmental terrorism? I just probably, you know, yeah, I I just, I can't think of anything. I mean, I am definitely not a wild child by any stretch of the imagination. So I can say that probably the, mm, the most out of character thing that I did in the spirit of wanting to get closer to my crush was, this was in high school. Mm. So my I went to one high school, the boy that I had a crush on went to another high school that I used to attend. So I went to that high school for one year and then transferred to a different one. So I knew the layout. I knew his teachers like I knew some of like where where he was. And at one point I drove (laughs) to his school like I drove back to that high school and pulled him out of class to be like, They want me to, like, I have a huge phobia of needles. And I was like, they want me to get a shot to go to college. (laughs) And I was like, I can't do that. Like, I cannot get a shot. And he, like, just was like, okay, well, let's, you know, he walked out of his classroom, like, and it's like, talked me through it. And then I went and got my vaccines. And then he's like, all right, I'll see you later. (laughs) So it's just like, like. Why did I show up randomly in the middle of a school day at a completely different high school? You would not be able to do that now. Like, right. <laughs> which dates me a bit. Um, it's, but, there's still a little K-drama, though. I could see a K-drama character randomly showing up to get a little comfort. So mm-hmm. yeah. He certainly wasn't like, who's this random girl? Right. <laughs> Very like, wounded heroine. Yeah, you were already <laughs> in the zone. Like, I mean, you weren't me with somebody who never even knew my name. <laughs> <laughs> like you had much you were much further down the line than I was. <laughs> it was the deal much yeah we're still uh instagram friends to this day oh. so like it's just really funny i was like like i'm the biggest introvert in the world like what was i thinking why did i do that so yeah definitely outside of my comfort zone there well, I think it's very sweet. I did date a rock climber and I'm afraid of heights. And on our first date, he took me to a gymnastics gym, which I can tell you was a flaming fail. Like I was like no part of, and I didn't pretend even. There was like no pretending. There was no coming back. It was like I like fronted that I did. Cause I mean, at that point I was like, there's no lion. Like not only am I like dizzy on a, whatever your balance beam, I can't do a cartwheel. I can barely do a somersault. Like, I've never been able to do anything. And so he takes me to a gymnastics gym. And he's like, just have a go. It was in Australia, of course. He's like, play around. And I was like, 
I mean, I, at one point, I think I ran towards a horse and like jumped in the little vault thing. And I was like, ah! I, like, pushed myself <laughs> off the horse. Like, no, I can't. You're like, I'm done. Yeah. I, um, in high school, I date, I scored a date with. <laughs> God. So this guy I had a huge, a huge crush on uh, in high school, and I worked with him at the time at a pet store. And his family was the owner of the largest set of funeral homes in my county. <laughs> so like this was a big, this, is amazing this was a big score. This this was a big score. Like if I could have married him, it would have been a big deal. Okay, and literally would have gotten in with his family. I would have been set for life. And the afterlife. And, and the afterlife. Um, <laughs> and the afterlife. And so we went out on this date, and like I think I like dressed up. I was like, this is gonna be, you know, like a thing. And he had a truck. Should have been my. Should have been it wasn't my like, clue. No, it was a truck, and he drove through a cornfield. I live in Pennsylvania. He's just in a cornfield with the bass in his, like, truck, like, blaring. And I remember, like, sitting there probably in, like, my khakis and a blood town <laughs> <laughs> being like, what's happening? Like, where are we? And he's like, I think he wanted to, like, show off. But, like, I'm not. You're the audience. <laughs> the tar- you're the target. Tar- 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 <laughs> yeah. And so, and we, like, we talked. He, like, parked in this cornfield, and we, like, talked for a while. And I was like, I guess this is what we do. On I didn't know. Yeah, I don't like, I know. I, was I wasn't sure. And then he's like, <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, he gets a call, and he's like, all right, so I have to stop somewhere. I have an errand to run for, like, my dad before <laughs> I drop you off. And I was like, okay. He takes me to a funeral home. <laughs> it is, like, 9 o'clock at night. Okay? It is It is dark. And he's like, you can come in and wait for me in the lobby. So it's like the lobby of this funeral home. And they have this like bird cage of like yellow finches, <laughs> but it's dark. Like, do you realize like what that looks like? A f- the, like the lobby of a yeah. funeral home, like in the dark. Mm-hmm. And he had to go down to the morgue for some reason. He's like down there with dead bodies. And then he like comes back up and he's just like, okay, like I can get take you home now. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Why are we at a funeral home? Why what is happening? Oh my god! I was like, I thought we were gonna like make out. Like, wait. He's like, come in the coffin <laughs> room, baby. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like I don't. And then okay, I'll then I'll one more and then I'll stop. I dated a guy who. <laughs> He was the Chucky at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh my god! Like he, that's what like his the job. janky old mouse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the threadbare mouse. <laughs> and he, like, he's a really nice guy. He'll never listen to this podcast. But he was also the type that would like sweat, like pr- like drip sweat. Like I'm talking those guys that would just like just drip it. Mm-hmm. So he'd like pick me up after being in this mouse costume. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he'd be dripping with sweat, and then there would be no. I don't know why. But there would always be Chuck E. Cheese tickets on the floor of his car, and I'd have to like shuffle through them. Like the ski um, ball tickets. When I sat like down. The you- yeah, like the yeah, I never understood why. I, so maybe that's that's what I did for love. I just went on really <laughs> weird dates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, well, you know, uh, how about so okay, <laughs> bring it back to the girl. <laughs> the eight sense. sense. What do you think yeah. about the choice of having surfing be kind of like the framing activity? I'm not like a surfing person. I've never like been around it. So it's not like a thing I'm interested in. Um, And normally like I don't like it because like they're like for like a drama type situation because I'm like they're all like covered up. I don't know. This entire drama made surfing so sexy that I'm no longer like anti-surfing. Now I'm like, okay, I, I'm okay with it. I, I will. I don't. I would like to know, like, how far away were they? Like, it just seems interesting to me that a university would have like a surfing club, but like, I don't know. I mean, it did seem like it took them a while. I to mean, get to the South Korea is not that big, so it's a couple hours. True. It's a good point. I mean, they had to stay over yeah. usually when they went. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we know. <laughs> so one thing I liked about it, if I can get metaphorical with it, is like, you know, so a couple things. One is that we see that, you know, the lead isn't a strong swimmer. Um, and he kind of mm-hmm. like admits to that. And so I thought that that was like a good choice to put somebody who really is like 
you know, for lack of a better word, like a fish out of water <laughs> um, into this situation where they really are going to be kind of like thrown into this, you know, bigger pond, quite literally being the ocean. So like the college experience is both like that. And then going into the ocean is very much like mirroring that experience as well. And so I thought that that worked really well as kind of just like a motif, I think, for like the, you know, the experience that he was having at college. Mm -hmm. Way to make it deeper than me. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. And for the trauma that they both experienced. The line where he's like, why did you kiss me? To cause you to, Cure to your erase trauma. your trauma. And then why did you kiss me to cause mm -hmm. your trauma? Mm -hmm. Like that dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like, are you freaking so kidding good. me? Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. Yeah. All right. Well, Piff well in oh, go ahead. Yeah, no spoilers. We'll, we'll get to, maybe we'll hold that for a spoiler section. Okay. Well, we get to that, so. women often aren't much more than plot moppets in a BL drama. <laughs> and so I thought that, you know, women had more to do in this role, in the in roles in this drama. So, you know, let's just speak to how you thought different women in this drama were portrayed from, you know, we had the freshman bestie. Uh, Eri to more of like the scrappy surf club president you won who was also looking for a job then we had the ex-girlfriend kind of campus it girl Unji and then we also had the therapist yeah it was a very diverse like you got to see many faceted facets of like female characters in this did you have a favorite like one that stood out for you you know look I loved Aerie. <laughs> mm. And you won, honestly. But Aerie, I just thought was, uh, I mean, both were interesting in different ways. Yoon Wan, I thought was interesting because I think she, I haven't seen a lot of dramas that have someone like that. Like sometimes there's a bestie girl, but not somebody who's like bestie girl for like, you know, the other, the other hero bestie girls. But she was, more fleshed out and realistic like we've already talked about like her job struggles and things like that she also wasn't like maybe conventionally beautiful um she does have a taste for younger men which was kind of cute you know she got some romance um but i liked her she was just like a little bit quirkier but like friend zone but it area like because she was really confident I felt like, and I liked at one point when he, like, you know, Jihyun's like, do you like me? Like, it was kind of like, you know, is there something here? Like, are you, like, into me? And she was like, uh, no, not at all, basically. Um, she's like, no, I know who yeah. you're into because I can read yeah, the yeah. situation. She's like, no, and no. she's like, it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she's like, I can read a room. <laughs> right. Yeah. She was his therapist where Jaewon had his therapist, like, Jihun had her to sort of like, let's reframe this. Let's, you know, talk through yeah. things. Yeah. So yeah, I actually have something to say about all three of them, if that's okay. Um, so I've definitely said on the podcast before, the evil ex-girlfriend pl plot is my absolute least favorite trope. Yeah, like in the it. history of, of things, I hate it. I didn't quite hate it as much in this drama. And I think there's a couple of reasons. A lot of times in BLs, if there is like an evil ex-girlfriend or, or whatever, um, she's very two dimensional and she's almost like the only, only female character or the only female character with like a lot to do. So I did think that Unji had a little bit more to her than just being like the evil. She wasn't great. Like she was, they didn't give her a lot to do. Um, but I like that they also, my least favorite is like, <sighs> at the end, like the couples walking off into the sunset and the like bitter ex-girlfriends just like glaring at them like, ah, like that's like my least favorite. So if you don't do that, it at least elevates it a little bit. And they, <laughs> cause I was going to say, I, I actually didn't like her. She's probably my, no, I didn't least like her. I, I, I'm not favorite. saying I liked her. I'm saying the act, the plot, de her her as a plot device didn't bother me as much as like I've been bothered before. But no, she didn't have like she didn't have like any other goals. See, I she bothered me more probably. I'm more forgiving. Like in watching, I'm trying to think of one that like the mechanics of love. I remember like that was one where like Allison, you really didn't like the like ex girlfriend of that, and I was like, oh, I, I actually didn't her. mind her. 
yeah, I could not handle this one until like the very end. And then I didn't feel like it was justified. Like when she kind of like, yeah, no, by the end, she's like, she concedes defeat basically gracefully ish, but she was a Mm -hmm. bitch, man. Like she was a nasty bitch and she was nasty to like the nice lady who worked in the restaurant. Like I just was like, I needed to see some reason besides the fact she was really pretty for why she was like the, like the queen girl. bee like you know i'm like she's like the some... queen bee yeah and i want to know like why like he had been in love with her like i like it makes me always like more sus- like it when you're in love with somebody who's like the evil ex you're always like well, why like you've been diminished as like a person then because like you kind of like were involved with this person that was mm-hmm. so horrid i wish that they had just done a few things more to kind of like I feel like everyone else got to be rounded out a little bit. I mean, maybe not the therapist because she was kind of just like always the therapist, <laughs> but like everyone else felt like they had a little bit more to do and she didn't really surprise yeah. me ever. She was just consistent. No, and I, and I agree with that. I'm just saying overall, like I think because that there are other women in the drama who I really liked, I was sort of like willing to like look past it. Okay. Because, because she, she wasn't, wasn't the, the only, only woman. One who they made mm-hmm. evil. That is what, that is like the biggest thing I can't stand. I loved Yoon Wan. And I really love that she had full conversations with Jay Wan, her best friend that weren't focused on his love life. Mm-hmm. I love that. Like, mm-hmm. yes, that's not like conversations are, are well-rounded, you know? And even with, um, with Avery, I thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, she was like, she just wanted to like spend time with Ji Hyun cause she liked him and I also like that she kind of had this like scrappy, like she had a character to her. She had this kind of scrappy attitude. She didn't like when seniors pushed her around. She stood up to Unji. She stood up for her friends. Like she had a a personality that was beyond just like being Ji Hyun's friend as well. And so that was another reason yeah. I was like kind of willing to forgive this like two dimensional ex girlfriend because at least you gave me like. <laughs> You know, Yoon Wan was, I freaking loved her. I, I would have, I would have watched a whole drama of Yoon Wan and Jay Wan just like drinking at a bar. Yes. <laughs> they were so funny. I agree. But the evil ex-girlfriend, I am, I'm not going to come back from. I quibble with her the whole no, way through. Even the fact that they, you put her in the surfing club is interesting. Like she's like the like pretty princess and she's in the surf club. Like show me more. Like I want to know more about this. Instead, it just felt like they were like, anytime she was around, she was just... Yeah, I mean, I'm just no, disappointed. She I was horrific. Yeah, I, yeah I, and I don't, I don't disagree. To a degree, well, I just want to say one thing. To a degree, I don't even know why that was necessary. Like, yes. he didn't need mm. an evil ex girlfriend, did he? Like, what was the point of that? I didn't mind it because it's like I, I didn't mind having an ex because it adds to like a layer but of messiness. evil ex. Like, why did she need to no, be the evil, evil ex? And the fact that she had like cheated yeah, like, on him, and then like he finally is like, "I want you to know that I've always known that you were, and I liked you and waited for you." Yeah, I was you over were, that like, in the love like, hotel. I was like, "Why? We've really gone down a rabbit hole. And none of this is redeeming her yeah. whatsoever or making her interesting. She's just <laughs> worse." I was like, "Why is this necessary for the plot? Like, I don't need this for the romance of Ji Hyun and Jae Won. I don't even need it." Yeah, and like the healing that you're having with this person. Yeah, and I don't no. even, and I didn't need it for like the healing. Arc of Jay Wan either like it really no, just no. wasn't necessary but you know we love to have evil ex-girlfriends <laughs> and I just think it like you know it filled some that's true <laughs> you know what <laughs> give us more like hotel room scenes <laughs> I'm just <laughs> yeah yeah we could have used like four more hotel scenes um before we leave this part though Allison I do want to ask you given like your professional background what is it like for you? Like, how did you feel like the therapist scenes oh, resonated? This is a good question because I had actually somebody in the Patreon group um, ask me that because we were watching Eight Cents at the same time and we were messaging each other about it. And to be honest, like that part of my brain is a flip that I switch on and off and I turned it off for this. And so I had to go back like after we had talked about it and like watch and sort of like think about it through that lens because I had to turn it back on and be like, Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. So I think, well, one, like a lot of things came to mind when I was watching it with that sort of like piece turned on is every therapist has their own like therapeutic orientation and therapeutic lens, which, which they see 
their world and their client and treatment. And so she may just have a very different lens than I do. And it's not right or wrong. It's just different. Um, but one of the things that I liked is you knew that they had a long standing relationship because he saw her in high school, I think. So the, he had been seeing her for many years is the impression that I got from their dialogue. And he like, they, he saw her for a period of time and then had come back recently for medication essentially is what it, what the drama made it sound like. And you could tell by the way that they talked to each other that they had like good rapport. And in that she challenged him because like you can't just come out and say, I mean, some people do. Like, I don't think it's therapeutically appropriate to just come out and say to somebody that you haven't known very long for very or very well or don't have good rapport with, hey, um, you're torturing yourself because you feel guilty about this. Like, that's not going to help the therapeutic relationship at all. But it, they did a good job of establishing that they had a relationship and that she had like been with him for some time and sort of could push him in different ways. So that was my, yeah. Mm. Maybe not how I would have talked yeah. to somebody or like my perspective, but it like, I liked that, those pieces of it. You're right. I do think they established that he did have a, like she knew him. I felt yeah. like she knew him and um, had a longstanding relationship with him. Yeah. Cause they, she talks about his relationship with his dad. She sort of pushes back and says, Hey, are you just using me for drugs? You know? And uh, yeah. you know, like she gave him some pushback, which is, can be really healthy and great but you have to have a, a pretty good rapport with somebody to, for that to go well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's pivot completely from therapy to tension. So this drama doesn't get like explicitly sexy, like some others that we've seen, like love in the air, Kin Porsche come to mind. However, the sexual tension in this drama, I would say is often off the charts. Uh -huh. And so what do you think are some of the choices either in like writing or how the characters play it that really influence that tension? I just want to say one thing. Um, there was a tweet that came out and it is, it was just a clip from the first time they exchanged names. And if you didn't read the dialogue, the way they looked at each other, you would think that this is like a super tense scene and like full of like emotion and all it is is them being like these are this is my name okay mm -hmm. well this is my name like it's it's oh my god i need to rewatch it this is just i need to rewatch the whole it's drama it's just the way they look at each other yeah. and it is too much to handle like i actually like held my hand over the subtitles so i couldn't see it and i was like oh. if i didn't know better this i would have thought this was like the last episode or something. Mm. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like they had that much tension between them from like jump. And they had amazing mm -hmm. chemistry. Oh my God. Chemistry off mm -hmm. the charts. Yeah. Honestly, it was the silence. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that they would sit together and almost like not talk a lot. And they couldn't keep their eyes off of each other. Like oh. that gives me like butterflies. They just kept like, looking at each other and like yeah mm, so good this was not explicit as leah said but it, i consider it to be one of the sexiest bls i've ever seen yeah because and it's not it's not innocent no yeah it i would say it's probably it's on the slightly spike i mean it's like a two out of four chili peppers if we're using allison's scale like i mean like they show that they like hook up it's not just like nothing or a peck on the cheek like you know well it's like the the tent the, the scenes to me that have like some of the most sexual attention yeah they're like not really clothed like there's a so this is the thing the yeah, i want to talk about the wetsuit time. scene a little bit but Jay Wan 
is like, I'll pick out your, because Ji Hyun is like never surfed. And he's like, I'll pick out your wetsuit. And he's like going down the line of wetsuits. And he doesn't pick the ones that zip up the front. He picks up the ones that zip up the back. And the funny thing is to me, like, I don't know anything about surfing, but I know that they have a long string so you can zip it up yourself. Like, I'm aware of that. But, like, Jaywon never tells Jihyun, oh, you can zip it up yourself. He's like, I have to help you. And I'm almost, like, I don't think there's, like, music. If there is music in the background in that scene, it's extremely subtle. So it's, like, all you hear is, like, their breathing, the sound of, like, the wetsuits, like, swishing together and then the like slow glide of the zipper and then like the way he like kind of patted his shoulders and like the sound of his hands on the wetsuit and i am like i'm i'm dying inside like that's all it is like there's no like other touching other than that like it's it's it would be chased at that point they hadn't become at all either yeah I'm, yes to all of the above um i th- can't remember if i messaged you megan or leah about this or when i told one of you about it but in what the in the first episode there's a scene and you just see j1's back and it's like that's longing like they captured longing so perfectly and you don't see either of the characters face you just see him walking away and I was just like stabbed to the gut, like that's beautiful that they can build that up with just like the small interaction that they had with each other at that point, and then let the camera work do that. And that was the whole drama and their chemistry was just sort of letting the silence, like you say, sort of fill in the gaps. Yeah. Um and I would say the next scene after that that had, which was, this was like short list. They like surf for a little bit and then they're like, let's shower. And I was like, okay, we're just, and then they're showering together, which I was like, they're like two guys and they're in like a communal well, the shower. One, the one shy, like, the one know, shy. Totally just some bros. <laughs> Where did <laughs> those eyes go, Megan? <laughs> yeah. So Ji Hyun is obviously very shy because he's like really, he's like country boy and he's, and Jay Wan's like showered with other dudes in the military because he like mentions that. But and that's and that's the interesting thing is Jay Wan's like, why are you uncomfortable? Like, you, are you sh- Jay Wan's like, don't you, you need to like get used to this. But Jay Wan's the one who's like continually staring at Ji Hyun, cannot stop. Ta- he cannot take his eyes off mm-hmm. of him while they're showering. And I was like, Jay Wan, look who's talking. <laughs> like you're the. And that was the same. That scene is like you just hear like the water running. There's silence. They're not saying anything, but they both just keep like looking at each other. And sometimes they catch eyes and sometimes they don't. And it's like extended. And the whole time I, my chest, I felt like there's a band around my chest that was just tightening and tightening. And I am like, yes. how is this possible? And then a like, minor, like one that's more minor is, um, you know, cause then you're like waiting for like, when is it going to finally, like there was a lot of like, when's it going to finally happen? And like, they had like lots of like, you know, almost kisses that were interrupted, which like, you know, you're always like, ah, and then they had like the night on the beach together. And I was like, okay, it's finally happening. Still didn't happen. But that night on the beach, it reminded me a little bit of um, Coffee Prince. Have you seen Coffee Prince? Allison? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When they're on the beach. and But I mean, like, some of the law lo- i mean i feel like to me it was some of the best longing i've seen since coffee Prince, mm-hmm. because coffee prince really was anchored in a lot of longing and mm-hmm. this felt very similar to me and like that le- that kind of tier of longing for sure i agree yeah totally yeah and then when they did finally like got to where they were able to be together like it was just chef's kiss consummate their yeah, relationship yeah. all the things they did together <laughs> i love those scenes because they felt like look i'm fine if it's just like love in the air like thrusting like i'm all about it like thank you for that boss and noel from love in the air but this was not that and this was like it felt artistic mm-hmm. they were like giggling under the sheets like it was like they were just so happy to like have that time together they would like they were like play biting each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the play biting like, was pretty. Oh my amazing. god! Everything about when they were together was just so freaking sweet, 
and it was still sexy mm-hmm. and it was like oh i want now i'm <laughs> i might I have know. to watch it i feel it like now, now that i'm yeah. listening like, tonight, i just need to rewatch it yeah for sure it was so cuz it's so dang cute they're so good yeah and it's his first drama uh, he was not <laughs> crazy crazy all right so <sighs> you know yeah I don't even want to get into the ending, really. I just think that we can leave it to say, you know, because we've done a pretty good job making it not super spoily. It is an HEA, which I think is important for folks mm-hmm. to know. But is there anything else with this drama before we pivot to Jack of Frost that you need to get off your chest? It's just a lovely, lovely drama. And I hope people will watch it. And I hope more KBLs like this are made. I, I hope with it was very successful. So I'm hoping that's just gonna they're just gonna keep you know making them making them different diverse give us like meaty stories because this was a good story yeah. um you know the trauma of like jay wan like it, there was a good story behind um the romance yeah and i would just say like with kbls they it feels like they think that the funding that people aren't going to fund them because they think that whatever like i'm sure there's a lot to it but these are 40 minute episodes and there was what eight or nine of them i can't remember 10 um and we ate every piece of this drama up like it was so good and so there is a demand and there is like people who want longer episodes just give us more than 15 minutes people (laughs) there's so many right that yeah i i i'm sorry but i was just gonna say yes like it, there were 40 minute episodes. It was one of the longer KBLs, obviously, that's that's been done. And I still was like, oh, it's too short. Yeah. Yeah. It's too short. Because there's so many, there's some really, really good ones coming out. Like you mentioned, our dating sim, which is all out now and on Vicky. Fantastic. Absolutely lovely KBL. 15 minute episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they could have given us so much mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. With those two characters, because again, if you're going to talk about chemistry, it's mm-hmm. our dating sim. Yeah. Great, chemistry. Great chemistry. So I think, yeah, for me with Eight Cents, this is now my favorite Korean BL, I think. So mm-hmm. it has unseated Semantic Error, uh, which is my now my second favorite so far that had not been beaten by any other KBLs before that. So yeah, I have a new, a new top dog in Korean BL. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was actually going to ask you if if it was it had like unseated. Yeah, so semantic error is that. my top for Korean BL. And just really quick, you didn't finish our dating sim. I have yet. not. I only have one to go though, and it's not going to okay. top. It won't top either oh. of those two. I mean, okay. I think it's very good. No, that's fine. But um, yeah. But no, I mean, I really loved semantic error, okay. and but eighth sense has I know topped it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so. Good. I think a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> so good and i think part of the reason is because they gave us a meteor show with 40 minute episodes like yeah. this is we are and demanding it now i will use both it's nice because i think both of those now are good gateways to recommend to folks who are like i want to try a bl and i don't really know where to begin i feel like both now mm-hmm. i i'm probably going to start now with both of these two semantic error and eight cents they're very different but i feel like they're um more full-fledged stories and i feel like if you're like a romance fan but you haven't tried bl like it's a good crossover to get invested i don't know if i would stick start people right in the thai bl deep end (laughs) yeah because there's a learning curve there (laughs) (laughs) but speaking of flavors of storytelling let's move over to japanese bl which has become my latest jam me and you, you guys in your JBL, <laughs> we love them. I I don't know. Leah and I are into the vibe. I feel the vibe so the vibes. much. That does not mm-hmm. surprise me one bit. They're v- so yeah. I mean, We're to really me, and look, I haven't seen enough yet to feel like I'm like a real expert. I've seen probably about five, but I'd say that like there's a little bit of like an austerity to them. I feel like they're very quiet, the- silent as well. There isn't a lot of music. Um, Mm -hmm. and I just feel like out of any, if we're talking about, and I mean, like, look, I'm only going with the ones I've seen. I mean, I know there's like a lot of Taiwanese BOL that I'm not even talking about because I haven't gone there. So I'm really coming from a place where in Asian entertainment, I've only watched Thai BL, Korean BL, Japanese BL. They each have kind of like their unique little spin on like storytelling, I feel like, and like some like, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, like what you can expect, but Japan feels the most elegant to me 
Mm -hmm. I would say. I would not disagree. Allison? I don't know. I don't know that I disagree. I have the hardest time with JBL. Um, I don't know if it's the tone or the way that the story plays out, but like part of my brain is like, nope, we're not doing this. But yet I watch every single one that comes out. There's something about it that doesn't jive with me. I think they're beautiful. I think they're well done. Um, I, yeah, I just, they're never going to be my number one. BLs. Is it that you don't love silent suffering? <laughs> I I love me some angst. Though. No, there's the so difference between angst this... and silent suffering. And I'd say BL in general yeah. is going to deliver angst, but there's different ways they're Every delivering time. it. Japanese Bless BL to me delivers yeah. it through a very internal suffering. It's always it's so internal I, in JBLs. I'm noticing. I think that's it because like. I'm so impatient with subtlety. Like I need everything in my face for me to get it. And I think like, I get what the JBLs are trying to do, but I'm like, this is not the vehicle with which I want this delivered. So that's probably it. And that's fair. Like that's, you know, we all, and I think this is good for folks listening too, who are trying to decide what they like and what they don't like. Right. JBLs are a whole different vibe. I would say, is in ref- in reference to Korean BLs, I think the Eight Sense is the closest to mm-hmm. JBLs that I've seen of Korean BLs, but no, it it's still, still has not, a very distinct. Still doesn't have. I feel like the Korean BLs are the most commercial, like to me, mm-hmm. like they may be really short, but they feel like the most kind of like overall palatably commercial. I feel like Thai BLs can be. They're just all over the place. Like you really don't know oh, what right. you, they you are kind of don't know what you're gonna get. You could get something really effing crazy, wow. or you could get something really tender and sweet, and you could get it all in like the same ten minutes, plus some electric cuting of the balls and a hedgehog watching. <laughs> you know, you just oh don't God. know what you're gonna get. <laughs> and so yeah, for me, you Korean know. hits yeah. mostly like that like center bout. I would say, like, you know, if you want to go for a walk on the wild side, Thai BL most mainstream Korean BL. This is like my gross generalization. And then kind of maybe like a little bit more of like an arty vibe of that's Japanese BL. I will say that my two top BLs that are coming out right now are both JBLs, which is blowing my Mm. little mind. I'm like, what is happening? Why are these? And which ones are those? Um, Our dining table and naked dining or something like (laughs) that. Just a lot of dining. Okay. No, I've been eyeing our our dining table. It looks really cute. It's the best. It's seriously it? like the okay. one that I most look forward to throughout the week. Aww. And it's JBL. Okay. And if you want to okay. read the manga, there's a manga that goes along with it. So, And okay. yeah, before we get, dive in, the very first Japanese BL I watched, Allison, you recommended it to me. And it took me, I've never watched, I need to watch the sequel. I, I have to at some point. But you kind of ruined me for JBL for a while with this which one is it mood indigo oh hey oh, okay no i haven't seen that one you you should watch it megan and it's fucked up and i was like so bad. watching it like sucked into it but also just like oh my god like i don't like this i am physically uncomfortable like the whole time <laughs> <laughs> and so i was like i can't i don't know if the jbl is for me and then like right i felt like that was a very difficult introduction and yeah. i don't think it's rep i mean there's some representation there mm-hmm. that i think does cross over but watching the one guy get head while the old man watches and like makes it happen was just like that was a journey i was not looking to go on <laughs> so bad so jbls are notoriously like what the heck or like <laughs> super sugary, cute, sweet, like fluffy. And that is, yeah, that's a what the heck toxic, which I just like, there was, I didn't know what else to watch. And I had Vicky and I had Netflix at the time. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm watching Mood Indigo because this is what Vicky tells me is the next BL I need to watch. Um, and it's, and then you're like, I need to tell Leah to watch it with no context. <laughs> <laughs> so mean. Uh, to be fair, we didn't know as you 
each other as well back then. So <laughs> I was we like, should, I think we should pod this one because it is like, I think Megan should watch it. And then we need to talk about it because it is just like a WTF. And I do want to see the novelist, which is the sequel don't, just because don't. don't. <laughs> it just gets oh. worse. Like <laughs> I, there, uh, uh, I, so, I'm currently rage watching uh, BL on Tencent right now called Love Syndrome, and it's like the most toxic, awful, Allison, it's horrible. piece of junk I've ever watched. Yeah, I, but I gave it up. Yeah. It's, it's so bad, so bad. I can't turn away. <laughs> it's it's horrific. It's so- and Mood Indigo is sort of like right there in that range. Like it's mm. so so bad, so bad. Well, we are going to get into jacko frost so first of all i watch this on the app gaga Ulala. is there any is that where you guys also watched it no i watched on vicky you did yeah. huh okay yeah i watched it when it was coming out i watched it on gaga when it like to rewatch for tonight i watched it on vicky okay well it's available on vicky mm-hmm. there you go i don't know what i was thinking Maybe I did want, I don't know. Either way, Jacko Frost is a Japanese uh, BL that Allison had watched and you recommended it to mm-hmm. me. And then I watched it and I thought, this is a Leah drama. This, this is, I think Leah needs to watch this because it felt Leah-ish to me. So I guess I can give like a brief introduction, but it, this is one thing I just want to say about Japanese BLs. They open with no context every Japanese BL I've watched, there's no exposition. You're just like literally thrown. I thought I started on episode two because I was so confused. I was like, am I on episode one? You started a very intense. Yeah. So it's a a couple who are in the midst of a breakup. And um, the one Ritsu storms out. And the next thing we know, he's been like hit by a car or something. The next time Fumia sees Ritsu, he's in the hospital with a head his head bandaged, you know, <laughs> with a, I'm sorry, like any head injuries in like Asian dramas kill me. <laughs> but anyway, and Ritsu, he remembers his brother, but he does not remember Fumia, does not remember him at all. And Fumia isn't quite sure how to handle it because they broke up. And in Fumia's, yeah, Fumia and it was Fumia's dumped him. like, <laughs> dumped him. And so he's not, <sighs> It's not like he wants to be like, I'm your boyfriend, because he's not. Like, Fumia's, like, committed to the end of the relationship, but... I don't know if Fumia's committed to the end of the relationship. They've had some drama. Well... So, okay, let's... True. Let's unpack true. what happens, I guess. And there some spoiler alerts, right. but... First, let's just try to talk about a little bit high level of, like, you know, Allison, I feel like you're a little more lukewarm on this. Megan and I liked it. Um, who might like this drama and who might want to give it a miss? So I think if you liked, if you, if you watch Japanese BLs, if you liked my beautiful man, um, I think you would like this. Uh, I think if you, I think if you liked the eight cents, you would like Jack of Frost. Yeah, I could see that. If you like second chance romance, you'd like this. Yeah. If you want like lightness, like our dating sim type light, maybe not. But I also wouldn't say that Jacko Frost is like crazy angsty. There's and there still is a sweetness to it in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Great. I would comp it honestly to uh, the cishet K drama, which is Go Back Couple, which is about mm, a couple yeah, that a have divorced or are in the process of divorcing, and they both end up back in time in you know their college years, except they've retained their memories. And they're committed to not choosing each other and like the circumstances that happen kind of like through fate to like make them wonder if, you know, maybe they don't hate each other as much as they did. And so in this one, I wouldn't say that I feel like the two characters hate each other. Like in Go Back Couple, like they they were married. Mm-mm. They've been through the shit together. They like hate each other kind of. Whereas in this one, no, it's more. Here's what felt real to me is it felt like. I kept wondering, and I don't want to get into like a lot of the spoilers with this, but I kept wondering what was the big reason for the breakup? Like, what was the big thing? 
Mm. And there was never, like, that was the realistic part. There wasn't, like, a big, sm- like, nobody was, like, mm. the bad boyfriend who, like, you know, did anything wrong. It was, like, they had a lot of miscommunications and different personalities, and it just started to go sideways. Mm-hmm. Started to fall apart. They, mm-hmm. like, felt a little, Fumia felt a little, a little neglected, and it, f- yeah, it fell apart, which I think that's, that is realistic. Most relationships, there isn't, like, one big blowout reason. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I always thought that that was an interesting decision by Fumia at the beginning to be like, okay, we're roommates. <laughs> do you think... I'll be your roommate. <laughs> do you think that he... I mean, this isn't necessarily a spoiler. Do you think that the drama did a good job of explaining why he chose that as it unfolded? You know, I will say no and yes. Mm. <laughs> so... No, not really. It didn't like overtly like get into him like kind of like questioning and soul searching and being like, am I doing the right thing? I feel like it just kind of like happened like, well, he's going to come back home and live here now. And honestly, I went with it to a point because I feel as if the breakup was an impulsive choice. I was just going to. And so therefore I don't think it was like a done deal. Like, I don't feel like it was like, I am so done with this person and whatever. I felt like, you know, they had like a very heated thing. They both meant to end it, but at the same time it was like, "Mm, I don't know if this is the right thing. And so this was a, there was still a lot of love here. And so I think there was just the sense of like, never really having wanted to say goodbye in the first place and now not having to say goodbye, but also being like, once you start going down this road, it starts to become a very complicated road to go down Mm -hmm. of like not telling your partner that they have amnesia and they're living with you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Fumia kind of, there's like a snowball that started rolling Mm -hmm. the minute that Ritsu got uh, like left the hospital and he like couldn't stop it and it just got too big and he didn't know what to do at that point. Cause I think he himself, like, this is the thing. I think he himself was conflicted on how he felt. Like I, he clearly still adored Ritsu. And I think, I think he loved Ritsu. No, I don't think I know he did. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think even he himself was like, can we do this again? Like, I don't think he expected to like bring home his amnesia, amnesiac boyfriend and realize that he was like, Oh my God, this is like when we first started dating and all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I am still in love with him. Like, I almost feel like it wasn't, it wasn't like deceptive to be deceptive. Yeah. I think he just wanted another chance to be like, not necessarily because we never get the moment where he was like, said, I want to end this relationship. And then like instantly knew it was a mistake. But the way that it felt to me is we saw that play out. Like he said, I want to end this relationship. Mm -hmm. And then he saw why it was a mistake. Like that he saw that, like he loved him and we got to see these pieces of why he loved him and how things could be different. But what, so I watched it when it aired and then I watched it again for tonight and I liked it less the second time because I was just like, you're making the same mistakes, dude, like get it together. Like just tell him, just talk about your feelings. And he just couldn't. And that made me very angry. Yeah, and I think that's part of what Leah was talking about. There's, like, this, like, internal, like, suffering and this internalizing your feelings thing that we get in JBLs. Because mm-hmm. I feel like that there was a lot of that in My Beautiful Man as well. Um, this kind of, like, internalizing your feelings and not just, like, saying it. Yeah. And I, for, you know, like five episodes. Yeah. To that point, I think that maybe if this had a second season, I would like it more because what Beautiful Man does is that it gives the characters time to grow and develop because that's one of my favorite JBLs. And I mm-hmm. am so excited for the day that um, my deity of choice, Jimin, blesses us with that JBL in like a streaming service that I can access because the movie came out in April, like the third installment of it and we don't have access to it yet. So. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's the same. So, but I, I think that's, that's with Fumia. He just kind of like internally. Mm-hmm. And he was, I think he, like, again, he was confused. Like, I think he knew he loved Ritsu, but maybe he too was like, am I making the same mistake again? And yeah. Um, but I loved the, like, I loved all the moments when he, like, remembered 
like he almost had to like remember why he loved Ritsu. And I feel like they, they keep like they had keep doing flashbacks. And second of all, Ritsu's adorable. Like, can we talk? Yes, we can talk about, about how that. cute he is. Because he's so, adorable. He is so cute with his like little scarf. And his little I mouth. Like, oh, he has a beautiful mouth. He's so freaking. I, mean, so I get why he loved him. I also get why he could be annoying sometimes just because like he was so adorable and just could kind of like flip through everything without mm-hmm. having to have a lot mm-hmm. of responsibility all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, he's kind of like that. Like, I think that um, like their relationship is like similar to my husband. So like my husband's definitely like Fumia. He's like kind of like straight laced and like kind of keeps things in and then he reaches like a breaking point which is exactly like what happened Fumia and then I'm Ritsu who's like a little flighty like kind of that like artsy like just wants to be the talent like he doesn't want to have to work and do bells and cook I'm like (laughs) so I just feel like I get that yeah that was the dynamic and like that's the thing they're like very opposites but but then there was just, but there was so much love there too. Mm-hmm. Oh, they were so, I, I, I love them together. Like their, their initial meetings made my, like once they flashed back and showed their like initial meetings, especially like that coffee shop, it really made my heart pound. And I enjoyed how we saw, like, I like nonlinear story, storytelling. And so in this, we were kind of all over the place. Cause we start from jump, like right in like, kind of like present. Well, no, in Pat, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. Was it past present? Like we start with, the breakup we moved to a breakup then we moved to amnesia then we moved to like them move like him moving back in as just kind of like the roommate but then we start to have the flashes through fumia's memory of like you know this is how our relationship was and so you start to connect that way but then once you start to um you know then once we see um ritsu get his memories back and access them we can start to see like new layers and nuances to like how he perceived things too and so i thought by like having some of that like back and forth timeline through both of their povs and then we've got the present day narrative yeah it just by the end i think i was just rooting for them i wasn't really i felt like i saw i don't know like I hear what you're saying, Allison, like at the end was their growth. Not really like they basically just kind of start back clean, but it also made me just realize that sometimes in relationships, things can feel like insurmountable problems that aren't really. And in this case, that's where I feel like mm. they had gotten, I felt like, you know, like when we had gotten to where he's like, I just can't do any of this anymore. Blah. When like he could, it's just that like, you know, Sometimes the people that we love drive us crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he needs and to I think he learned to communicate. communicate. <laughs> and that was like the end. That was yeah. basically like they had learned the lesson. Hey, we should communicate yeah. better. Yeah. But we needed a whole amnesia <laughs> plot to get there. So, but I do have a question. Did any, this is what, did any of you think that Ritsu was faking it? No, never. Oh, no. Okay. The whole time. Well, not the whole time. Almost the whole time. I thought maybe Ritsu was faking it and that was going to be the big reveal was that he was like, I wanted to see if you would like, you were going to be honest with me and you weren't. And like, I don't know. I, I don't I, I, like, but I, so I was playing a fourth dimensional chess game with you. Yeah. And I was convinced that that was going to be the big reveal. And then when like Ritsu's like he actually gets his memories back, I was like, oh shit, I was wrong. But that I really, <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. But yeah, I I mean I think like again this was oh my god when they went to that like vacation mm-hmm. home, oh it's just so sweet. I just I guess I just loved watching them. I thought well I think I said this on Patreon. I thought it was a really clever way to do a second chance romance. Mm-hmm. Because that's what this is, basically. Um, and I thought it was an interesting way to do it mm-hmm. with the amnesia plot. And it was just really delightful to watch them fall in love again or remember why they were in love in the first place. It yeah. also reminds me kind of vaguely um, of the book What Alice Forgot by Liam Moriarty. And in What Alice Forgot, that's an amnesia. I did not love this book. 
but you know, I thought that there were some compelling things about it. And so, and so what I thought was interesting is that it, this is more from the perspective of someone who has amnesia. So basically it's somebody who wakes up and thinks that they're still 29, that they're pregnant, that they're desperately in love with their husband. And it turns out that they've like had this accident and they're actually in the process 10 years late. It's 10 years later. They've lost 10 years. They have three kids. She's about to turn 40. She's getting a divorce and she has to be like, what the fuck happened? Like, you know, all I can remember was everything was great. Now here. Oh, wild. Like okay. what happened in the last 10 years. And so a little bit of like, it's almost like it was from the point of view of like a route to of like them, except like, in her case, she knew that she had lost this time. She was just trying to patch it together. But, you know, I thought it was an inch. I didn't, I can't say like I loved it the most, but I think I liked it. And I probably, if I read it again, I might like it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, kind of like, I felt like that was a bit of a comp too. Cause amnesia definitely is like a very hit or miss for me, but lately I'm warming to amnesia and what amnesia can do in a plot. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why I was like hesitant to start this. I was like, Ugh, I don't know if I really want to do an amnesia plot. And then it started and I was like, this is so good. Like this is, this is It's great. definitely not a typical amnesia plot. And it's not a typical second chance romance, which is my least favorite trope of all time ever. Second chance. Anything. Yeah. Like wow. hands down. It's, it's your least, least favorite? favorite. Did that yeah. what you said? But I really like this drama. It's just in the second. I just didn't love it. What as is much it that I makes did. it? Because I feel like second chances usually people's very top or almost top. Oh, absolutely not. Like I don't know. It's not my favorite. It's not either. mine either. But I'm just curious to like. I haven't had anyone be like, I can't stand it. Yeah, I won't pick up like typically unless it's strongly recommended by somebody or apparently a BL. Like I won't read it or watch it and it's i like i don't give people second chances you're dead to uh, me like that and i don't have any patience for people who do so i love you're so like mild-mannered and they're just like i will cut you off like, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not uh i love yeah. it what's your what's your zodiac sign a leo she's a quiet and I'm, tiger lion <laughs> Yeah, I'm a Leo all the way through. I have a heck of a lot of Leo in my chart. So, but my Taurus is just... my rising sign. So that I think allows me to sort of like move about the world a little <laughs> bit more quietly. <laughs> yeah. Are you a Leo moon it. too? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, sun, moon, and a heck of a lot of other Leo placement in my chart. Really? Yeah. I find okay. it very intimidating. <laughs> yeah, me too. Leo's intimidating. Why? I just do. We're, I don't know why. Yeah, so dog, nice. You bite the back of our necks and I'm like, hey, I'm down. You are nice. That's what I, I guess. I thought maybe you would be like a Libra or something. No. My, okay. my best friend and I were having a conversation the other day. And I was like, well, we just do things like we just do what we want. <laughs> like, as if there's a question and she's like that's your leo talking <laughs> and i was like oh, oh that's amazing yeah maybe i love that i know this about you now yeah that's so great yeah we should try to do like a bl uh astrological chart sometime that would do our head in <laughs> i asked neil the other day i said because I, like, I had made him take the clifton strengths okay? oh nice and so i was like wait did we have because i was like explaining how leah and i are both enfp our mbti mm -hmm. and i was like wait did i have you take the mbti and he was like i have like i have no idea what you're talking about and i was like okay well it's like he's oh he goes i have no idea what you're talking about and i was like so i didn't have you take that test he's like no but i'm sure i would have scored very high and i was like you dumbass there is no high score you get four letters and he's like okay well my four letters are f-u-c-k <laughs> <laughs> i felt like i was in a drama it felt like drama dialogue that's hilarious anyway i was like you know what fuck off <laughs> well, my husband has done myers briggs and he came home all pissed he's like i got the bad one i'm like what do you mean you got the bad one there's no bad one he's like i got the worst one i'm like there is no worst one <laughs> 
<laughs> They're all valid. Got ISTJ, which is my direct opposite, which makes perfect sense because I can barely get through any interaction with him without fighting in some level, even if it's like not toxic. <laughs> and yeah, we're like complete and utter. We're Virgo Pisces. Like on everything that can be opposite, we're opposite. So anyway, I don't know how we got into our personal story. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. 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 It was me. It was my fault. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Is there anything else we want to talk about regarding Jacko Frost? I guess. I, anything else you want to get off I your think chest? The one thing I want to get off my chest because I was rewatching it recently and I, I loved watching Ritsu fall in love with him. Like with, uh, I can't say his name now. Uh, Fool me yeah. Up. But him not being able to articulate it or like not knowing how to navigate communicating that to him because he'd be like I I want you to spend the night in the bed with me and I want you to do this Mm. like he had feelings for him that he was really unsure of what to do with and I loved seeing him fall in love with him after the amnesia so it was sweet too because Ritsu was like I feel like this is what we should be doing And he would ask a lot, like, have we done this before? Like, have you made me food before? Have you, you know, and I feel like Fumi is trying to, like, navigate that. But Ritsu's like, I feel like I love you. Like, I can tell that Ritsu's like, I am attracted to you. Like, why is that? And it was really interesting. Um, I, I just, I feel like they balanced each other really well. Um, and I think that's part of why they were able to come back together. And here's yeah. something you like... <sighs> So with BLs, I have been able to walk a very Dubcon line often where like things aren't very consented and I'll be like, it's okay, I can deal with it. Like it's part of the plot convention, whatever. But in this, I am really glad that like Fumia never really crosses any lines with Ritsu either. Mm -hmm. Like he's never hooking up with him under the auspices of like, oh, this is our new first time. And I appreciate that because I was problematic and they were in the farmhouse. I'm like, just, <laughs> just who cares if he doesn't know, just like he's in the bed and he wants you in the bed, get in the bed and do it. <laughs> get in the damn bed. You know, yeah, I'm glad that that didn't happen. And it, yeah, it, it, I like, agree. Slept on the couch in his little like cold, lonely, lone, lonely, his cold, lonely, bony <laughs> <laughs> bed, you know, like all. <laughs> I know. I agree with you. The consent was nice. I, I like, thank you. Yeah, there was the no Dove Con. He was never, like, con- yeah, he never was trying to get with Ritsu in a way that was going to later when he got his memories back be like, whoa, you were totally right. hooking up with me this whole time, too. And yeah, right. like you, dick. Yeah. And in their flashbacks, like, consent king, like, Mm. When they do, like, the first time they have yes. sex, like... Oh, I forgot. She... They do flashback to the first time they have sex, and it is the sweetest... Oh, yeah, like, he's... I forgot. You're right. It's just, like, well done from start to finish. Like, that's why you're like, okay, Ritsu, I get yeah. it. I get it why you fell for this guy and why you put up with... And he makes good food. Yeah. And, I mean, look, I'm more of a Ritsu than a Fumi, like, 100%. I am, but I yeah. felt like I could understand Fumia's frustrations. Oh, for sure, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And that's why I think the show did a good. I I, I wasn't like Team Ritsu or Team Fumi. I was like, I'm Team. I want them back mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I think it should be. Like when you're watching a romance, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. And I was glad there was no. Like you know, they had like the kind of X. You know, like the ex boyfriend that he could. I love that he could remember literally everyone except for Mumia. <laughs> like, you know, he right. remembered his ex who worked in publishing. And I was glad because when he kind of came on the scene, I'm like, oh no, we're going to have like the whole evil ex. This. Yeah. The old, like, other man yeah, drama. Thank God. No. So- yes, I agree with that. Thank God that the, the ex was just like, look, I'm not getting involved in your amnesia <laughs> <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> like, I- like, this is not my scene. <laughs> Why was he even there? Like that just he had to I give um uh, I think so that um you know that way it let Ritsu kind of have like some 
career like he couldn't just be a sad sack with no amnesia like or with amnesia like he had to have like some stuff and like he had to so being a wanted artist i mean i guess that's one correlation between eight cents and jack of frost was we had two two of the protagonists are illustrators yeah um and so yeah you had to see him have some competency he couldn't just be like the flaky nasty nothing Pretty like boy. yeah he he's a very talented artist that's why he's yeah so crazy. yeah <laughs> and you needed fumia to come up against his feelings to be like oh wait a minute that's like there it is that's why yeah, yeah. so you get- see now i want to rewatch this yeah. too now i want to rewatch <laughs> both these oh they were they're both so all right good. well i think we have talked for a long time we've combined two dramas yeah. and i'm hoping that folks are going to if they haven't watched take the chance to jump in and warm their hearts ride the wave of eight cents and then go post your emotions with jack of frost on a fire like some marshmallows way to go you just came up with that on the fly i'm impressed (laughs) all right well on (laughs) y'all come samnida thank you for listening to afternoon of delight where can you find us outside the pod? Head on over to afternoonadelight.com. That's A F T E R N O O N A D E L I G H T.com. You'll find links to all our social media, our book recs, K pop and K skincare recs. And if you want even more Afternoon of Delight, because really who doesn't, you can join our Patreon, where you can choose the patron level that's right for you. Join in daily K-drama conversations, listen to bonus podcast episodes just for patrons, and participate in our monthly live K-drama support group via Zoom. We can't wait for you to be a part of the community. Until next time, annyeong!